Hi everyone, this is Nen. It's been a bit, but I finally got some time to condense the situation that happened between the creator of the Webtoon, Covenant, and Webtoon themselves. I'll be referring to the creator as Explodey Kid, as that is their artist name. In April of 2024, April 19th specifically, the creator of Covenant, Explodey Kid, tweeted out, my publisher Webtoon is trying to sabotage my graphic novel launch by deleting my credits off my episodes and prohibiting me from telling my own readers that the webcomic they read is available as a book. This was all part of a longer thread in which Explodey Kid claimed that Webtoon, was not allowing them to advertise the graphic novel release of Covenant, the webcomic, in the webcomic itself for all the subscribed readers to have access to. Webtoon was instead telling them to go to a different section of the app slash website, which was called the creator profile, and they could make a post there. The thing is, the creator profile, being a very new feature at the time, had much fewer followers than Covenant's webcomic did. Covenant's webcomic having about 700,000, and at the time, Explody Kid's creator page having only about 11,000 people. And so for Explody Kid, they felt that this was part part of a series of actions that Webtoon had taken against them that were unfair, from unfairly age-gating their comic, denying them multiple raises despite having made this comic for three years on a crazy schedule, and now sabotaging a book launch. And if you don't know much about comic creation, in the webcomics world, a book launch is the way you make most of your money. Yeah, you get paid for other stuff and for merch, but with the way margins work on books, books make you the most money and are the best way to make money in this industry. And so because of that, I decided to actually reach out to both sides. I ended up speaking to both Explody Kid and Webtoon, but I spoke to Webtoon first. I had a conversation with my insider source at Webtoon, who then left me with a couple of pieces of information. But the main statement they left me with basically said, they said Webtoon has a long-standing policy about advertising within the comic series. And they've always had that policy and that they maintain policies around in-episode advertising. So like they have never or don't enjoy allowing in-episode advertising or promotion that don't go through them as webtoon. They said they regularly try to work with creators to find ways to promote their work via banners, landing pages, and push notifications. The person I spoke to specifically said that Explody Kid could have come to them and they could have worked something out. Now, I don't believe that Explody Kid would make a post like that if that option was easily or available or at least as simple as the response from webtoon said it was. So I went to speak to Explody Kid and I gave them the statement. I asked them a few questions and throughout our conversation, Explody Kid said a few things to me that were interesting. They said, one, the long-standing policy was something that was either never really enforced internally in Webtoon or was never really well explained to them at any point by an editor or anyone else. And so however Webtoon may feel about this policy, it's clearly not being properly and evenly enforced across the platform. And I actually found other instances across the platform of people marketing their stuff. And it seems that a lot of those people may have had their books published through Webtoon. So there's clearly a sort of like in-group that's allowed to do this for some reason. And the reasons for that may be numerous, but that is obvious. I proceeded to then speak to Explody Kid more about their experience with Webtoon. Because Webtoon claimed also that, like, you know, they were working with Explody Kid at the time to resolve this. I was told that that wasn't strictly speaking true. And whatever in talks conversations that were happening were not happening in the way that I was led to believe from Webtoon. Now, I want to be clear there's a certain he said, she said element to this. But, like, it's very clear that either both sides perceive the situation very differently or the conversations that are being had are not clearly being relayed across to the relevant people. But I decided to actually understand a little bit more about things that Explody Kid mentioned. Explody Kid mentioned how they had been unfairly age-gated. So I decided to explore that conversation because maybe I could establish a certain behavioral trend from Webtoon that showed that they were clearly ostracizing this creator through inaction or action. Explody Kid ended up telling me about how their content was once flagged and they were just never explained what was actually flagged in their content. And as much as Webtoon has been supportive of their comic, as they are of all comics on the platform, it has never been in some exceptional way more to fulfill a basic level of the obligation that I've personally seen is often in the contract of webcomic creators with Webtoon. So I asked Explody Kid, you know, about financial damages and a few other questions. The financial damages, for according to them, were quite large. That lack of access to an audience is going to to affect not only their publishing release, but also future sales of their books, which I actually completely believe in makes sense with the way comics are sold. While they can make up for some of that with their own marketing and their own effort, it's never going to be the same kind of numbers. As I have seen in the coming months, they have gotten to an extent, but that does not mean that they have gotten the maximum value that they would have gotten out of their work if they had been allowed to do some in-comic advertising. One of the things that was very interesting to me was the way Webtoon had worded a few things. They never lied to me, but they were very regularly saying things in a way that was very 
very specific. It does not seem that they were in any kind of amicable talks with Explody Kid or Explody Kid's team about advertising Covenant on the inside of the comic. In fact, it seems like Webtoon has always been kind of stalwart about not allowing Explody Kid to do this. And when I asked them, they said they were in talks because I guess they didn't perceive in talks to mean in talks to get Explody Kid what they wanted. The final part of this for me in terms of opinion piece is pretty simple. In this situation and in future situations like this, Webtoon would do well to not hinder the sales of comics coming from their platform. Webtoon side essentially is you're not publishing through us. We don't want to give you the kind of special treatment we may give other people because we're not going to have the upside of what is going to come from your comic. Whether they say that to me or not, that seems pretty evident. But on the other hand, I also see Explody Kids angle here, which is like, you know, I worked really hard for this audience. They still read the comic on your platform. They still pay you Webtoon. There is no reason for you to not give me this little bit of access so I too can make some of the mountains of dollars that you make off of my comic. If Covenant sells a ton of books, sales and does really well, Webtoon gets to say a Webtoon original sold, blah, blah, blah copies. They get a ton of marketing off of that, but they're being really stingy about this. Seemingly only just despite this creator for not going with an internal publishing team. We've had other comic releases with none of this hoopla, but this hoopla is happening right now in this very specific situation with these very specific constraints. And I can't help but imagine very soon, or we might already have not noticed, Webtoon is going to be treating people who go with outside publishers a lot worse and they're going to need to rely a lot more on those outside publishers to be able to have some level of independence. And you know, I think what I'm saying makes a lot of sense seeing as ever since this Explodey Kid thing happened, we've seen quite a lot of creators finish their comics and kind of make a full exit from Webtoon to pursue other projects all on their their own. Even Rachel Smith, golden girl of the platform, is doing her own thing. So that tells me that to some extent, the relationship creators and Webtoon have is just not as stable as Webtoon may want to believe that it is. And so when they do things like this, when they're hard asses like this in situations like this that do not need it, it kind of draws a line for creators, right? Because they get to realize that like, you know, the Webtoon hand might feed you, but the moment you're not the perfect golden child that they want, that hand will easily beat the shit out of you. That's how it's coming across to me. Let me know your opinions on this topic in the comment down below. And if you like comic journalism or whatever I do, please remember to hit like, hit subscribe, and check out my Patreon. I spend a lot of time on these projects. I would love to be able to make more because I think it's interesting what happens in our industry. I've been Nen, you've been awesome, and I will see you on the next webcomics up video.